Well, good evening. My name's Travis, uh, and I collect hobbies. And uh, I figure this one might be something y'all are interested in. Um, who here has a scanner? Like, okay, half of you. Um, I played with scanners as a kid, and uh, I saw an article about this thing, and it's basically, among other things, a cheap scanner. So, uh, but it is more than that. So I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction here, kind of the theory. What we're discussing tonight is uh, software-defined radio. Okay, and I apologize that this is this stuff is hard to see, but uh, it's the best I can do. So basically, um, let me a little bit of a disclaimer. Uh, I am a radio amateur, in in the sense that you, I mean you guys are experts compared to me. Um, but here we go. Um, so, United States frequency applications for radio spectrum. Um, with some devices, uh, you want to you listen to AM, all you need is, a, is a, the proper crystal, right? You know, it's analog and whatnot. For most other things, you're going to need a dedicated chip for whatever device it is that, is, uh, that you're using the frequency for. So that's, you know, part of why uh, the FCC divvies up things the way that, like you see there. Um, the the fun thing about software-defined radio is instead of having a dedicated chip, you have a program uh, that is kind of decoding the signal. Uh, use, excuse me, using the computer itself, and uh, you know that that brings up some interesting possibilities, like. Um, what actually got me into this, I was looking at an article and they had, um, somebody had the idea of maybe using software to find a radio to make a radio telescope. That's way far off from where I'm at right now. But, you know, in theory you would listen to 1420 megahertz and that, that would be like a clear signal for looking at space. Um, but there's plenty of other applications. Um, Basically, what got me interested in the idea of, of SDR is that it used to be about $700 to play. Um, skip around here. All right, and you had to buy one of these things called a Universal Software Radio Peripheral. Um, it was, you know, up to 1700 bucks to have one of these things. So, uh, kind of a high cost of entry to play with this kind of thing. Well, recently, this jobby came on the scene. It's a uh, European uh, digital TV receiver that you can plug into your computer and watch watch TV with that little dinky antenna that comes with it. Um, so it's called a Realtek RTL 2832. And uh, let's see, this dude, Anti Polisari, he took it and he took it apart and he figured out that he could hack it and he could make it so that when you plug it in, he writes drivers for it, you plug it into an SDR program, uh, and you can tune in from 64 megahertz to 1700 megahertz. There's a, there's a gap, uh, I think about 1,000 to 1,200, I believe, is the gap. But for 20 bucks, you can play now. So that's the appeal of this thing. Um, so let's say you get on eBay and you buy this for 20, 25 bucks. Um, comes with a PAL connection. You go to Radio Shack, you find something that can work with that. Um, and there's all these communities that are popping up over the last like few months uh, around this device. And one of them is uh, Reddit. Has a uh, Reddit.com has a subreddit called RTLSDR. And on there you can find a list of all these generic and, and other branded um, chipsets that are similar to this. Uh, this one is a generic uh, that I got off of eBay. And uh, so ideally what you want, because there's different tuners and such, but this one is the 2832 with an E4000 um, tuner, I believe. All right, so from this site I kind of did some digging around and I got to spinch.net. Unfortunately, Spinch is down right now. Uh, but if you go to this site, if you get into this, um, there are 
instructions on how to install for Windows. Uh, there's a few SDR programs, um, HDSDR, which we'll be looking at tonight, uh, and uh, I think the other good one is uh, SDR Sharp. Um, so let's say you do get into this, I actually have the program to install all that stuff and I can hand it off to you. But basically what, what you'll end up doing is you install the drivers, you uh, you load the program, and there's another thing that comes with it that's interesting that, uh, anyone ever heard of the Raspberry Pi or uh, that sort of thing? Okay, so some people have taken this and they have, uh, they've set it up on a small Linux box and put it out somewhere and they can access it over a network and basically have a remote uh, station that you can, a remote scanner. Um, You can. Network. Yep. So a few other things you can do. Let me get off this page. Um, all right, so there's SDR Sharp. It's not just a scanner. Um, so you're not, you're not flipping through all these stations that you want to listen to. Uh, you can, you can um, tune into whatever you want, but you're also seeing a, like a waterfall effect of like it's scanning a frequency and showing you visually uh, a range of frequencies. Um, now, what I have set up, because I'm brand new to this hobby, is the HDSDR, and that's, you know, basic functionality. For you guys that are way off into this, um, and I hope to be one day, there is a program called GNU Radio uh, that you would run on Linux, and um, it's much more in the weeds. You can decode a lot more different things, because either you can uh, make your own program, or there's a lot more stuff out there. Um, uh, kind of let your imagination run wild with that. All right, so here's another site. This kind of goes over um, the whole whole thing, basically, GNU Radio on down. And you can find a script, as I did, uh, that will install GNU Radio for you uh, within Linux. I simply don't have it set up to a point where I can show everybody all that stuff. It's kind of in the weeds for me. Um, but let's see if there's anything else major to cover before we get into it. I kind of wanted this to be more of a hands-on thing, like, you know, the antenna that's out there, not mine, so this is a grand experiment. Um, but after this talk, um, anybody can come up and we can tune in and see what we find, right? So uh, this is an internal view of the dongle, just so you can get kind of a brief... Uh, Look at that. Um, some of these, there, there is one problem they've come up with or that they've found is that some of these will have a, a missing uh, diode so that you can short out the, uh, the stick. But uh, I'm pretty sure this one is, it's been safe so far. Um, another community is ultra cheap SDR. Um, so a lot of people ask questions and get answers on there. Um, Okay, this is an overlay program for GNU Radio that uh, gives you the pretty, uh, you know, spectrum analyzer there. So what kind of a frequency range is that? Is which? So it's the other screen you had there. Oh, I'm not sure. That was 435.831. Well, but I mean the entire screen across. Mm. Is it? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it, it'll... Yep, that's true. But so what's interesting though, and I, I guess I forgot to mention it, is that, you know, since a lot of people are getting into this now because it's so cheap, I kind of, just kind of like thinking about what this could be, there could be a future where, um, yeah, you have different frequencies marked off for certain deals like FM radio, AM radio, that sort of thing, but maybe in the future you'll have a computer, it'll be ubiquitous, and this thing can can listen to a bunch of different frequencies at once and gather that information and vice versa you can transmit dynamically across the spectrum it's probably a long way off but I, I think that this might hold the potential for that someday um, so other th cool things you can do you can um, excuse me let's say that your computer is not fast enough to, to decode on the fly you can also record uh, with a lot of these programs 
and then uh, run an algorithm to decode later. Um, trying to see, I had a I had a deal on here. I'll just tell you about it. Uh, one of the things that was neat about this was uh, there's all sorts of little projects. Like there's a guy who is in uh, the Netherlands, and he um, he had it hooked up to like a, a dish uh, network satellite dish, and he had the dongle like you know right where at the at the focal point, and uh, he was picking up in Marsat um, satellite deal. Uh, there was another guy that. Uh, he was capturing uh, an NOAA satellite feed and then ran a program and was able to see the image that was being downlinked. It's so like a hurricane image was what it was. Um, there's all sorts of stuff like this out there. So it's, there's a lot of potential in this hobby. Um, all right, so enough of that. Let's get into it. And this is the part that could be extremely underwhelming because we're, we're you know, kind of in a basement or whatever, but, um, where's the, I gotta find the coag. That's frequently our problem too. <laughs> <laughs> we just don't admit it. <laughs> All right. Um, I can, yeah, the table moves. Well, like, adjust watch, watch your, your video cable behind you. Oops. Oof. Yeah. Duck under it. So you're going to turn okay. around and back to the, you put your back to the audience. I can get you a few more. Okay, that would that'd be good. Does anyone have any Probably an adapter in here. Is that app tag? No, he's got the pal. Yeah, it's pal to coax, what I got right now. Does that work? Okay. Um, well, I'm, I might, but I'm concerned I might have to reinstall the software if I do that. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um. You can you can change. There's about, like I said, I'm a newbie at this, but there's a few different options, like right here. Uh, FM, AM, right. lower side band. Yep. And then GNU Radio has a, like a plethora of different things you can do for decoding. This is HDSDR. Um, so I have, I've already got it set up as it thinks it's an easy cap, easy TV right now. And I can set the sample rate. Right now it's at uh, 2 MSSPS. All right. So um, that. All right. So here we go. Um, I will choose to start. We'll see if we can get uh, local weather. That would be a good. All right. And start. I would hope so. Okay. Well, let's, yeah, let's do it. All right, so uh, as you can, sorry, okay, uh, yeah. yeah, is it AM modulation, or FM? I'm not sure what's going on. Yeah. 
Well, let's see. I think so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I it kind of a lot of this depends on how good your antenna is and where you're where you're located. But um, okay. Well, at least you can you can see the waterfall going. So, um, and and uh, Dave, could you remind me like what are the capes of this? It's like eight eight. Uh, it goes over 3.2 uh, samples a second or whatever, and then what's the band? Eight hertz or something. So, I mean, it's not you're not getting the same capability as this. Okay. Oh yeah. That could help. Well, um, are we seeing a signal up there? I think it's a. I think you're seeing a signal. I'm not seeing it. I just can't seem to do it. There we go. There, there's sometimes a little bit of lag in. So the next part of this hobby for me is finding an antenna. Uh, if you guys have any suggestions. Uh, tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> About 19 inches will be good. Yeah. All right. Well, you can definitely see something there. Yeah. He's transmitting, so you can see. How do you tell if this is going to happen? Oh. You're, t you're constantly transmitting, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think I'm starting to get something. Okay. I'm trying to widen it out a little bit. I can. Eh. Well, Travis, you're working on that. As soon as I stand up, it's going to be Yeah. Uh, what I was going to, you know, so we were already going to say, well, you sold me on buying that. Travis has been working a lot on this lately. Dave's got working on a few projects. Uh, there's a couple other people at the bakery that are either working on something like this or are familiar enough with radios and computers and that kind of thing. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the I can hear you. Bakery, it's just not very loud. Try it out. So, it's, so it's another one of those things in that open shop time that I described on Tuesday. One, two, three, four. Saturdays, yeah. 
folks will come down and say, yeah, I, I got this thing and I'm just not sure how to use it. And then we sit around and figure it out. And somebody goes, well, what we really need is an antenna. We go rummaging around the, the scrap box and we find this piece of copper. Oh, that's great. This will work as an antenna. But it really needs to be mounted go on ahead. the stand out in the driveway. Well, you know, I got some PVC in my truck. Let's go put that together. Um, now it is working. It is Kate the volume though. A lot of, a lot of our so. work and projects are literally to that extent. Somebody comes in and says, this is what I want to do. And it is that spawns the, well, let's do this. Let's do that. And we run out and we weld something together. Or we turn something on our lathe. Or we make something on the 3D printer. And in the course of an evening, we'll figure out something. And, you know, this is the kind of example of that. I did that. So this is yeah, kind of in I was working. But, like, I'm, I'm sure that there, there will be upgrades to these programs where you can scan a, a number of frequencies and get on whatever's going, um, just like a regular scanner. Um, but I kind of like the waterfall effect. That's neat. Um, and then there's the recording function that you could you could take stuff and then feed it back through a decoder. Um, by the way, I can pick them up now, but for some reason the volume is really low. So you can come by and play with it. Uh, but that's pretty much our presentation. <laughs> It can, uh, this H HDSDR does not do, di uh, or only a little bit supports digital modes. If you want to do the more interesting stuff, you need uh, GNU Radio, which supports um, a lot of that kind of stuff. But you've got no invention for digital. This a this just receives it. UHF is all digital now. Right, yeah. and so this one uh, supports not. this uh, this this DRM over here, or, um, digital radio radio Mondeo. What is it? The, I don't know what that is. What is it? I'm not familiar with it. Um, HDSDR is not set up for that. It's mostly um, for uh, just FM, AM, uh, phone type, type stuff. A little bit of CW. Um, it's actually handy for plugging in the audio cable from your regular so radio too. Pick up satellites, um, uh, which is yeah. digital. It's correct. Yeah, now, it if you want to, if you want to do the digital mode, you need to use uh, uh, the GNU radio, um, and it's got a bunch of decode blocks for all those yeah. kind of stuff. So let's scan, you know, Plus it's all open source. It's all open source. Yeah, you can add your own stuff. Sure. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. 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 Or is he hmm. that radio cool. that he mentions? Um, I can I can show you the websites. I haven't pulled up actually. Um, I was interested in knowing what radio, <laughs> if I can look up the radio with the digital that he's talking about. No, uh, just a driver that someone wrote, and that's, yeah, so. Various connections on the antenna. Yeah. Okay, so the the best site to go to to get started is this one. It's, um. Power base? Yeah, it's called. Is that dot org? Um, dot, com. dot com. And actually, if you really want, just want to make it simple, just type in RTL SDR, and that you'll find what you're looking for. But this site goes line by line, everything you need to do to set up both That's Linux the kind and Windows. Yeah. Find out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. So. One of the suggestions I'd make is if you come to things like this, and have some handouts for people. Okay. You know, a printout so that they'll have it in their hands so they can. Just, sure. Okay. So yes. Just a guess. Just a guess. I'm a lot more comfortable with C sharp than I So, this is a this is a brand new thing. This this was found out in April, I believe, and uh, it's it's probably going to bring a lot of people into the hobby. So, you should see a lot of innovations in the next year. Um, if anyone wants to come and, and dial into something, uh, give it a shot. Be my guest.